Hey everybody, one of my viewers is recapping their Best Tech ATX 250-12Z power supply and needs some help finding where the capacitors go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this power supply here, this is another ATX 250-12Z power supply, and show you where the capacitors are located in it. I have done a partial recap on this unit. This still has some of the original caps, but many of the original bulging ones were replaced. Well, all the bulging ones were replaced. So let's go ahead and get this cover off here and have a look inside. Now, of course, thing about power supplies, and I need to mention this in more of my power supply videos, is this label here does not kid. It's it's real. Power supplies can hold a charge. And I usually let power supplies sit for many days before I actually open them up and do whatever I need to do to it, unless it's something like a fan replacement. But if it's any kind of work that's going to involve taking out the PCB and replacing capacitors or doing anything like that, I let the power supply sit for a few days just to be sure those primary caps inside have discharged, and they usually will. But especially with today's power supplies that have active PFC, they can they can have up to 400 volts in them. So it's something you want to be def definitely want to be careful with. Okay, I got the cover off, and here's a look inside this power supply. Most of the replacement caps are actually harvested ones off of motherboards and other power supplies. And this cap here, the blue one, is a brand new capacitor from Radio Shack because I don't have any other caps that were rated for 25 volts, 220 microfarads. Anyways, I'm gonna start from the left side here at the primary stage. Usually, this is not the side you have, side you have to worry about, but these are two 200 volt, 470 microfarad capacitors. And I'm not gonna be covering the itty bitty capacitors. I'm gonna be covering the ones that commonly fail throughout the rest of this unit. This cap here. In some revisions, you'll find a 50 volt cap, and others you'll find 25 volt. This is actually a 35 volt cap here that I installed 220 microfarad and you notice how it's spaced way off the PCB. We got some diodes down there and of course diodes put out heat and there is a resistor right there. Resistors also put out heat and electrolyte capacitors do not like heat so I try to keep the cap spaced away and since there's a new ca capacitor from Rayo Shack it had the long lead still on it I decided to cut the leads to a size that allows the caps to extend way off the PCB. Hopefully that'll help it last a lot longer. And over here, next to the secondary side heatsink, is a 6.3 volt 2200 microfarad cap. The original capacitor was a 10 volt, but usually you can, you can downsize to a 6.3 if you got motherboard caps and they'll work just fine. Never had a problem. Here we have a TPO, or at least this cap is, 2200 microfarad 10 volt cap. I did leave some of the original caps in this unit that weren't bulging. This cap here, next to the other inductor, is yet another cap of the same value, I believe. I believe these are both 2200 microfarad 10 volt caps. Moving on, down to the side over here, we have two 2200 microfarad 10 volt caps. So this thing's got plenty of 2200 microfarad 10 volt caps in it. At least one here, one here, and two here and of course they're the same height just making sure because I don't want to give you any false information this cap over here this dark blue one is a 1000 microfarad 16 volt cap this cap here is responsible for the minus 12 volt rail back here between the black wires and Yellow wires, if I didn't cover this one already, 1000 microfarad 16 volt cap. 
And in the back here is a 2200 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. So hopefully this information here will help you out with recapping your power supply. Your best tech HCX 25012Z power supply. Some of these I've had to do full recaps on. Some of them I've only had to replace the 5 volt standby cap. Or at least the ones in the center of the power supply. Not sure if they're all for 5 volt standby or not. Anyways, hopefully this information here is helpful for you in recapping your power supply. Now, of course, the HX 312E and HX 312Z likely have different layouts. Now, I know that the 312E does, and I'm pretty sure the 12Z does too. And if you're using a Bestec HX 25012E, remove it immediately because it has a faulty file standby rail and will burn up your motherboard. Anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.